Hi everyone, uh, as some of you noticed uh, this summer, uh, my company Fuzzing Labs uh, actually started a partnership with uh, Starkware um, and uh, this partnership is actually um, to uh, help develop a security tool for the Starknet ecosystem. And uh, one of the first tools, I mean the first tool we actually developed and released was uh, Toth. Um, so you can call it TOS or TOT, uh, I mean, whatever, as you want. Um, and basically, this tool is a disassembler, a decompiler as well, and is doing a bunch of other stuff. So uh, my goal today is basically to show you um, the goal of this tool, uh, what's the output, uh, to, to do like a kind of tiny tutorial and uh, also explain what is the benefits uh, of this tool and how it could be uh, helpful for you. So, uh, as usual, you have uh, everything on the link on the description below, um, nothing fancy. I create a sheet sheet just for you to uh, follow uh, everything I'm doing. So, of course, the first step is to install the tool. So, Toth, um, you can, uh, you need, you will need to have Gravviz, you git clone, and you pip install um, the the tool. So, you can basically go inside Toth. Right there, there is the code. You can do pip install locally you will get the version that will be installed will be the um, 0 0.2. That means the one that contain is the latest version um, currently released that contain the decompiler. So I will uh, show you show you after that. And you can do Toth-H and you have the helper and uh, everything we can uh, use right now. So uh, let me just first uh, show you an example. So there is this test JSON file Cairo array sum. So I can already uh, show you on inside Toth testes Cairo file. Uh, we have so the one I mentioned array sum. So this one array sum dot Cairo. So you can notice that's the old version of Cairo, meaning it's the uh, syntax of Cairo file before uh, 0 0.10 uh, that was just released uh, recently. So in that case uh, is this one. We have an array sum uh, and so on. We have some um, allocation. Uh, we populate some value in the array and then we are calculating the uh, sum of the uh, whole array uh, and we output the result. Okay, so um, nothing uh, really fancy uh, right there. Uh, basically, this stuff, when it's going to be compiled by uh, the Cairo compiler, will give you uh, this output file. So that's this JSON. So in that case, we are dealing with Cairo, uh, not, uh, I would say, StarkNet specific uh, Cairo file. You will see the difference later. But basically, uh, the program is compiled into that, and that is the data. It's basically the bytecode, the Cairo bytecode. And this bytecode uh, will be interpreted by the VM and executed and so on. You also have a bunch of debug information. Uh, a lot of different uh, metadata will be stored inside and so on. So basically, uh, TOS will use, uh, will only take as an input this uh, JSON file. Um, and based on that, it will uh, basically disassemble and analyze this um, input and um, tell you what this stuff is uh, doing. So let's give it a try. TOS. Um, then we provide the file dash f. Uh, then we uh, basically give me one sec. Uh, Toth dash f testes. Then we are inside the JSON files. Um, let me move the mic. And then it's Cairo RSM JSON. So we are running the stuff as you can see as the output of the disassembler. So this data have been converted and interpreted into this one. So um, we have a bunch of structures that seems to be used. We retrieve the building's output. We have a Starkware Cairo common alloc, serialized serialized word, main RSM, one function, the main function, and so on and so on. You can also perfectly uh, put dash dash color and you will get uh, something like that. Um, what you can also see, is, for example, this offset 23, there is two of them. It's because um, each time, uh, most of the time, when 
typically when we have an insert equal in that case, uh, we are also updating AP, uh, and that's the, the that's the one we, we see uh, right there. It's not mandatory, as you can see on the 25, uh, we are not doing any update of uh, AP, the accumulator pointer, uh, but well, I mean, that's, uh, that's okay, that's dependent. We can see a bunch of stuff. We can see that there is some comment. That's basically the disassembler that will give you some extra information. Like in that case, we have a call to the ID uh, function ID7. That is actually the main array sum. So the main function is doing a call to the array sum function. Uh, that's actually what we saw uh, previously. Let me take a look at the code, but uh, right there. Okay. Uh, and so on. So just keep in mind that the disassembler in that case is only working with the bytecode, uh, the stuff that is um, available after compilation and typically the stuff that is uh, actually stored uh, on chain. So um, it's particularly useful for you if you want to understand uh, how your code, your Cairo code is compiled, what is the output result after the compilation. So you will be able to understand and, and get something more uh, clean like that. So that's one of the first usage. A second usage, of course, is also to analyze uh, some piece of code that um, where you don't have any uh, access to the source code. So. We're going to do an example uh, right after. Uh, before that, I just want to show you some other uh, features. For example, if we are doing a dash H, you will see there is some other uh, argument. Only the dash F is the mandatory one. So you have um, the dash C that will generate the call flow graph. So it's this one, um, particularly useful to understand the different the. Uh, correlation between the function, the uh, interaction, and also which function have been added by the compiler without you to know, basically. Uh, as you can see right there, we have the main function, it's the entry point because there is this uh, double um, line uh, around. Um, and basically, this main function will call the RSM. The RSM seems to be a recursive function. And this main function will also call the Starkware Cairo alloc and the Starkware Cairo uh, serialized world. Those one are in red, so that means it's imported function, meaning that they have been added by the compiler to the bytecode um, uh, directly at compile time. And we can actually see that right there. That's the alloc function. That's the serialized world uh, function uh, right there. Okay, so that's the call graph. Uh, it's uh, it's it's one of the, the the one of my favorite features uh, actually. To to be honest. Then uh, what we have, we have the CFG, uh, it's not the most useful information to be honest, it's, it's it will going to be useful if you are really doing some EV reverse engineering, I mean for the moment it's not uh, that important, but yeah, and if you need it, you, you have it. Uh, it's, this feature is actually uh, important for us for the decompilation, so it's the dash D, and the goal of this feature is actually to try to reproduce um, um, some output that is similar to Cairo, uh, so it's a bit more uh, lisable than uh, the disassembly, the pure disassembly. So that's the goal. Uh, let me put some color, and as you can see, we have the main function, and we are just, again, just with the bytecode, as you can see, only the, the JSON, um, he is able to retrieve, okay, there is inside this RSM, there is an if, uh, that will check for a particular value, otherwise it will return. There is a call to RSM and it will also reconstruct the uh, arguments and in which order. So um, as you can see, we are still using the AP-2, AP-1 and so on. We are currently working on um, um, having something a bit more clear with basically um, temporary variable and so on. But at least for the moment, I mean, we just released that two weeks ago, something like that. So uh, we are still making some progress and so on. So it's maybe way more easier for you to understand. And in the same way, the main function will call alloc, will call RSM, serialized world. Uh, when there is uh, some value, we are also providing uh, in a comment the value in uh, uh, an hexadecimal form. And if it's a string, we will print the string and so on and so on. Okay. 
So that's um, most of the feature, to be honest. Uh, let me check. But yeah, call graph, CFG. Um, we have also some analytics. I mean, I can show you that quickly. But the, the main goal is basically just to, to, to give you a bit more info. Uh, it's still something we need to improve. Uh, we was more thinking of having like kind of a Obj dump like for, for Cairo. So we will still need to make some progress for the moment. I mean, Please let us know what you would like to uh, to have uh, basically inside those um, those options. And if you have any idea, please uh, let us know. I mean, everything is on uh, this GitHub. It's public. Um, you can just create some issue for the moment. Only me and uh, Nabi from my team uh, actually create some issue. But um, you please do it um, and um, let let us know if you get uh, any issue. So that's all for uh, this uh, introduction. Um, I want to show you uh, um, another case uh, where basically it's uh, tough will be really interesting. So what we have done is basically that, doing some testing. Uh, what I want to show you is how to analyze a closed source uh, contract. So um, typically, um, I've been to uh, Gorly uh, to using Voyager. I took a look at a really recent transaction. As you can see, I mean, you don't have the the, the time uh, of this video, but it's basically like two or three hours ago. Uh, there was this transaction, and this transaction is against a particular uh, contract, that is this one. So I click on the link and I got this address. So what we can see right there is um, the source code is uh, not verified. So nobody actually upload the source code um, and tell, okay, that's the source code associated to this specific contract. So nobody have done that for this uh, contract that was created in uh, July uh, this year. So the only stuff that we have is the ABI. So we are still we still have some information like get public key and so on. So we, we still have some stuff, uh, but we uh, that's all. We have the ABI and we have the bytecode uh, like that. So it should remind you the basically the data section of the JSON um, uh, and so on. So we have nothing else. So my main goal is to, uh, to understand what this contract is actually doing. Um, so it's uh, it's interesting. So I copy the address of the smart contract and I basically use a Starknet uh, tool with get full contract. I provide the contract address and I specify the network alpha Gorli. And um, basically, if I'm uh, uh, running this command, uh, let's go back inside my folder, this one, um, I will um, basically get uh, the JSON specific to this uh, contract. So it's going to be a huge uh, JSON in that case. But you can see uh, some stuff right there. We have, give me one sec, right there. We have the ABI with some value input and so on. So it's the ABI, entry point by type, external, the program. We will get inside the program some information, again, some metadata. We have the data, so the pure bytecode of the uh, contract, uh, and so on and so on. There is plenty of stuff, plenty of metadata uh, that is uh, inside this stuff. So I basically... Um, uh, output all of that into test JSON, okay? And then I will do some analysis uh, on this uh, smart contract. So first of all, let's do tor-f test JSON, okay? The disassembly seems to be working. Let's put some color, um, okay, interesting. So we have some call right there, main execute, execute on code return. So when there is some wrapper, that's also mean it's some uh, stuff that have been uh, added uh, directly uh, by the, um, the the compiler. Sorry. So we have the main function with the execute. So um, just a quick reminder: we don't have the source code. So uh, I'm only doing. Um, basically reverse engineering, reversing of this uh, contract. And I try to understand what this one is actually doing. So we have also a is valid structure. So all those ones seem to be, when it's wrappers, um, it usually means that uh, we are um, either using um, 
there is some some decorators or it's some internal function so um, that's basically this one main set public key that is calling the contract accounts library account set public key so really interesting and this one is calling this one and so on there is some asset crawl uh, and a bunch of stuff um, so that's good um, that's to be honest not enough for me to understand a bit more what this stuff is doing so usually i'm really using the dash c um, uh, command to generate the call graph and it will be a bit more clear so as you can see we have um, the main uh, constructor that is right there and there is some wrapper so again it's since we uh, have this uh, this function that have been uh, actually uh, decorated with the constructor um, uh, decorator uh, the compiler actually generate a wrapper the same for this one it's an external function meaning it's a function that is callable uh, from the outside we can actually see that right there read contract get public key get nonce is valid um, is valid signature so we can actually verify that is valid signature view set public key external so set public key will not be a read but a write method so we can see that right there external means basically it's a function available uh, from the outside so you can directly call this one get nonce get public key so again all those view are a read uh, readable function and uh, those one are basically writable uh, function so we have the this execute uh, function as well let's see if it's yeah it's it's the case underscore underscore execute underscore underscore and, and so on there is it seems some uh, arguments and so on so that's basically the abi they provide this information let's take a look what this one is doing so typically the execute function uh, also have some uh, internal function the execute on code return uh, it's calling the account execute and all of that as you can see all the red ones are basically uh, import a function so um, all the stuff is actually coming directly from uh, the, the starkware library or uh, some maybe some other libraries uh, that are uh, used so in that case contract account uh, account initializer and so on so that's standard uh, library we have the get public on code return valid on code uh, and so on so uh, you you get the idea you can see that the account execute is actually also calling this is valid signature and so on and so on so you get a way better picture of what this contract is doing and you can still continue your analysis of course you can also decompile the code uh, and you will get something like that uh, with uh, directly uh, even the, the different arguments and so on so you can uh, continue your your analysis in a more uh, simple way like get nonce is actually doing get nonce get on code return return set public key returning multiple arguments in that case and so on and so on so uh, I don't know this one, uh, this contract, but I'm able to do the analysis. Uh, ideally, of course, it will be for Voyager to uh, actually use uh, Toth, but um, a quick spoiler, uh, we at Fuzzing Labs currently discussing with uh, Nethermind that are uh, developing Voyager to maybe integrate that directly right there. It, it's gonna be really, I uh, think, really, um, interesting and useful for you if we are able to directly see the disassembly or the or even the decompilation um, and maybe the call graph directly uh, from Voyager um, so I, I'm really uh, looking forward uh, to that uh, and uh, yeah that's pretty much all I, I hope it's uh, useful for you I hope you will uh, give it a try and uh, please uh, let us know if you get any issue or any um, unsupported feature I mean we will be really happy to uh, to implement um, something new um, and uh, of course as, you, as usual uh, everything like the JSON the, the, the stuff all the code and so on are directly available on the link uh, and it's basically redirecting you to these uh, free courses with I'm basically putting everything uh, on that and uh, also it's more useful for you if you want to um, to be aware uh, when basically I'm uploading some new video about Cairo that as you can imagine will be the case in in the in the future since uh, we have a bunch of other projects to 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 
to develop and we are thinking of developing maybe some some further maybe some static analyzer and some other security tool uh, for the starknet uh, ecosystem so please uh, let us know if you get some any idea and any feedback and um, have a good day and uh, please uh, enjoy the tool thanks <laughs>